Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel for our weekly six scale recap series where we'll be looking at teases, pre-order announcements, releases for the week, anything newsworthy in the six scale world that might not have merited its own video but I did want to discuss. So before we get into the topics, I'll start by saying happy belated 4th of July to everyone in the States. Hopefully you had a good uh, holiday break, I know I did, and although it was a little too short. Uh, but now, regarding this week, Hot Toys is keeping up with a pretty aggressive release schedule, but besides that, I have to say it felt pretty light on announcements. Again, just feels like everyone is prepping for the summer showcases. So this should be a quick video, although I do have to say also XO6, still the wild card as we'll see. But before starting and getting into the crux of things, I have to go into my mandatory disclaimer. I'm not affiliated with any of these companies, I'm not affiliated with any resellers either, and I'm not using this as a sales post, which is why I don't post links for purchasing these. Purpose of these videos is just for me to discuss some interesting news posted essentially on social media that impact six scale figure collecting, and in particular things I find interesting or products I'm tempted to get from my own collection. And, and I do think once pictures go public for announcement, it's pretty much up for discussion. So with that out of the way, let's jump right into things and we'll start with teases. So first, and the only one for this week is Hot Toys has been teasing this new license they have, uh, Cayman Rider Black Sun. So I know next to nothing about this property other than having watched a trailer just to prep for this and to see what all the fuss was about. I'll say this, I'm clearly not the target audience for this license. Watching the trailer almost felt like Power Rangers of sorts. Uh, of course, you can feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. I'm not trying to uh, insult or, or say it's a bad uh, license, just not for me. But the reason I did want to talk about these a little bit is because we do tend to get on Hot Toys a lot for just giving us the same type of figures, Star Wars, Marvel. So I do appreciate that they're trying to do something different here. And they are developing a nice variety of li licenses here. Like we got the Warriors of the Future figures that look amazing. Uh, and even the Indie that's still not up for pre-order on Sideshow, but regardless, it's nice to see them branching out and at least tackling different um, licenses from a figure point of view. Now this figure looks to be pretty well done and it does look like they're also teasing a motorcycle and while Hot Toys has been easing back on six scale large, uh, larger vehicles, they do seem to be making the smaller cycle. So I think based on the quick image, this looks really good. I'm guessing this is gonna be released as part of the summer releases. Um, they've had three teases in the license, so I'm sure this is coming up imminently. Again, not for me, but I appreciate the branching out here. Now, as far as new figure announcements, I'll say both are from lines that I'm really excited for, although I don't think they're super popular in the community. But hopefully, again, I could be wrong. First one is coming to us courtesy of Og Toys as part of their ongoing Dune line, and it's Duke Leto Atreides. Now, I'm a huge Dune fan. First three books are some of my personal favorites, and I actually enjoyed the miniseries that the Sci-Fi Channel did a long time ago. But I do have to say the new movie was just incredible, and I have really high hopes for part two, which is releasing this summer. And for me, Duke Leto is one of those great characters, and I think Oscar Isaac portrayed him exceptionally well. He's honestly a bit of a tragic character, portrayed by his own charisma, and even though he knew that he was being set up to fail, he still tried, albeit unsuccessfully, to prevent his house's demise. And also that speech he has with Paul and Caladan, he really did establish himself as a good-natured leader, uh, which makes his ending that much more tragic. So let's talk about this figure because I think the prototype turned out great. And I think the sculpt is a really solid effort that looks a lot like Oscar Isaac. And that's one thing with Og Toys. Uh, this teased release, as well as the prototype for the new Paul Atreides and the still suit, are actually pretty impressive. And if Og Toys can deliver on these sculpts, I'll be even more excited to get them in hand. Now this version of Leto is based on the armor that he wears on Arrakis. And it looks good, or at least I think it looks good. Even though it does feel a little bit on the simple side, uh, there's a lot for me to like here, including the, the dirty white uh, de um, coloring on the armor, uh, even the detailing on the collar. And I, I do even like the boots. One of the greatest story points for Dune is that even though there's some clearly advanced technology because it takes place so long in the future, computers and the like are really no longer the norm. So while it very much takes place in the future, there's almost an ancient feel to the story, which I think goes well with the armor that was designed for, for the film. Now the figure also comes with a set of binoculars and his knife. I'm not sure what else they could have included here. Now I'm also not sure if the arms are double jointed since all the shots didn't really showcase that, but I guess we'll have to see when he releases. One other thing I did like is that the undersuit for the um, for the figure is, is a fabric uh, suit. 
So I don't think it'll be restrictive for um, posing. And of course, the images are also teasing the Jason Momoa Duncan Idaho figure, which I'll be getting as well when they put that up for order. So as a fan of the books and of the movies, these are must-gets for me. And I'm curious what Odd Toys has planned for the future of the line beyond Idaho. Honestly, while I like the Arrakis Slato, I would be interested in seeing uh, one in a ceremonial military uniform to go nicely with the first Paul release from Kaladin. And at some point, we have to get some of the Harkonnens, right? Namely, it'd be great to get that uh, Batista Raban character. Now, I know these figures aren't for everyone, but I'm excited for them. And I'm excited for something new beyond the standard MCU and Star Wars releases. Only other thing here is that Inar also has a license for Dune. And they've mentioned they're working on their own version of Paul Atreides, but they're taking forever. I have no doubt they're going to release a great figure, but in art to me is still a bit of an unknown, an, an, of an unknown in that I don't know how deep they'll move on lines. And it's likely they might just do Paul and stop. And with their slow progress, I think they've opened the door for other companies to jump in. So I think Og Toys has a really great chance here of making a name for themselves. Um, I, I have all the figures on order with the first Paul Atreides release uh, having already shipped out to me. So hopefully I'll be getting him in hand shortly. And I'll be looking forward to seeing what the figure looks like and, and doing a little review on him. Now, next up, from XO6, Lieutenant Commander Data from Star Trek The Next Generation. And I have to say, he looks incredible. I mean, there have been complaints about a number of the Voyager figures made by XO6, and I totally get it. But this figure has to be one of the best sculpts that they've produced to date. I mean, it looks exactly like Data. Now, you could argue that it's a synthetic life form, and because of that, he's a little easier to reproduce. But I just think the detail work here is amazing, with the wrinkles, the eyes, and even the eyebrows. It might even be better than the first contact data they put out, which again was one of the strongest efforts to date. And unfortunately, was one I missed. Um, somehow, I just didn't realize uh, XO6 was launching. Uh, I, I just missed the, the boat on that one, and I missed the early Picard and data. So it's great to have an opportunity to pick up the character again. Now, as for the uniform, I do like that the uniform for TNG was a little more formal than the jumpsuits on Voyager. I think they did a good job recreating them um, here with that amazing tailoring that XO6 is really great at. And the nice detail work on the collar with the rank pips and the slight color stripe um, along the, the trim really does pop. Uh, while they have been doing figures from TNG, namely the Judge Q and Locutus, this is the first member of the command crew getting released. So I think it's kind of a big deal, and I'm glad they delivered such a great looking figure. Now, based on my experience with them, their figures tend to look a lot better in hand. So if Data turns out as good as the Proto, this is going to be a real standout. XO6 is releasing Data in two versions, similar to how they did Captain Sisko with the Essential, just having the figure with the standard accessories like the phaser and the tricorder. Now, the standard version includes some additional hands and the pad. First big additional accessory is a full second sculpt that's supposed to have a slightly different expression and showcases his positronic circuitry. And then the final bonus accessories are two versions of Spot, one posed to drape over Data's arm and the second just sitting. So a nice package. I don't think it's as good or as, you know, as varied as what we got with Cisco, but it's a pretty solid one overall. And for me, that's the version that I ordered. And, and of course they do showcase Data's Enterprise D helm station. And I do think it'd be great to get that as a diorama piece because it would really add something to the figure. And again, I like to have options. Sam Toys does that, even Hot Toys has been doing that, so I appreciate the ability to pick almost exactly what you want. Now, to me, these are like the Dune line of figures. I love them, but they're not for everyone, and I think the Trek-based collector community seems to be more limited. But I'm really big on them, and besides Marvel, Star Trek is my next big license. Definitely more so than Star Wars, and at least for me, and again, just my opinion, I found myself enjoying Star Trek much more than present Star Wars. So when I say I have to watch out for XO6, this is what I mean. They have so many figures they've teased, including Deep Space Nine and the crew, the Picard Season 3 line, and, and really that was such an amazing season. And then you've got Modern Trek. From my point of view, they're the big wild card that I have to watch out for, but I'm excited to see this release. Only negative here? I wish some of the other characters, especially from Voyager, had gotten this kind of treatment. So far, the TNG line with Judge Q, Locutus, and now Data is really impressive, and I'm wondering if it's just that XO6 is more focused on these figures. Hopefully, XO6 carries us through to the Picard line of figures and to the Wrath of Khan figures, which I've been really looking forward to. But for now, this data release is impressive and to me is a must get. And in the announcement news story that went along with the XO this, XO6 seems to have committed to the full bridge crew. So Picard, Riker, Crusher, Worf, and Troy should all be coming our way. Now, moving on to actual releases, Hot Toys is on a mission right now. At one point, they were, I think, about a there were about 150 active pre-orders, and while they're still high, they're definitely making a dent. And early in the week, they released Fennec Shen from uh, 
Shan from The Mandalorian and The Book of Boba Fett. Now, Book of Boba Fett wasn't the greatest, but I think Fennec was one of those great characters played by Ming-Na who killed it in the role. And as a figure, I think this one turned out really great. Sculpt is a highlight here with the amazing work overall, and I think Hot Toys with their release continues to do a pretty great job. Dina for me is still up in the air, at least until I have her, have her in hand, but this looks great and I really like the detail work on the figure overall, including that rifle. And the last release, also from Star Wars The Mandalorian, is Cosco Reeves, joining Bo and Axe Rose. And this is another one that turned out great with an amazing sculpt and great detail work on the armor. With so much work on The Mandalorian figure uh, and The Mandalorians themselves at this point in time, Hot Toys knows how to deliver great armored figures, and this continues that trend. And I just like the overall look of her with the rifle and the armor. I feel like she just pops. I'm personally staying away from the line. I just can't pick everything up, but she looks fantastic. And if there were any figures that would tempt me right now, it would be her and Bo. But I'm sticking to my guns and only picking up select few Star Wars uh, releases at this point in time. So I'll have to enjoy watching all of your unboxing videos. So that was it for the week. Like I said, pretty light in terms of news stories, but some really nice announcements and releases. And for me, both pre-order announcements are coming home. So while a light news week, not a great week for my wallet. As always, thanks for watching, and if you're enjoying some of my content and are so inclined, please consider liking, commenting, and subscribing, and we'll touch base on the next video.